Hey guys, so in this video we're going to discuss an interesting topic that I saw on Reddit a while back. It was posted by Reddit user TinyFred and talks about what this video will cover. How to beat players that are better than you in Fortnite. So I'm going to put my own spin on it as I think it's an interesting topic that I've always personally thought about since Fortnite first came out. A good example that I'll use is Mongrel or Mr. Savage. To me, they have the best combination of mechanics, gun skill, game sense, and just overall gameplay in all of Fortnite. In a perfect world with a fair 1v1, they probably beat out every single player they could go against. But in Fortnite, it doesn't always work out that way, which is why Fortnite's so unique. Other than a few occasional mistakes, Mongrel or Mr. Savage will die in arena or public matches just like any other player. They can rage and make excuses to blame RNG or glitches for why they died, but more often than not they died legitimately and were killed by someone who had an advantage over them. The person who killed them may have had a better position on them or caught them off guard with an aggressive play. Whatever it may be though, Mongrel's opponent or Mr. Savage's opponent was able to kill him. This doesn't mean that his opponent is necessarily better than him, it just means that his opponent had some sort of advantage in that specific fight. That's what this video will be all about, discussing what those advantages are, how you can recognize them yourself, and lastly, how you can use them to beat someone who's probably better than you in game. I'm gonna break the video up into four different sections that cover kind of the four general aspects of Fortnite that you can use to kill a better player. Obviously, RNG or random miss and glitches is an easy way to kill people, but we should only really care about the consistent advantages that work and that don't rely on luck. As always, I'll put the timestamps on the screen now in case you want to skip around, but I definitely think this video will be easier to take in if you watch the whole thing through. So let's start with the first intrinsic advantage that will allow you to beat a better opponent, which is your loadout. Your loadout consists of pretty much everything you have in the bottom right corner of your screen. Your guns, utility, traps, and materials. Your loadout should always be a major factor in deciding and kind of dictating how you play and what decisions you make. Yes, part of getting your loadout and which guns you have is RNG, but playing around your loadout and using what you're given to your advantage is not, that's all of game sense. An easy example to understand how your loadout can work to your benefit to kill a good player is if you and a better player than you happen to land at two different houses and a POI like Salty. Say I land at one building and find only an AR, and then Mr. Savage lands at another and finds only a blue pump. I have no idea what guns Mr. Savage has, and that's the biggest problem for me because I know I can't get anywhere close to him as I don't have a shotgun myself. To be safe, I assume he has a shotgun because more often than not, any landing spot you'll land at will have some sort of shotgun in the house, and when you're left without one, this is when you need to rethink your strategy based on your loadout because you don't have a shotgun. So if I see Mr. Savage coming out of his house, I need to keep my distance and stay as far away as I can. An assault rifle is most effective from mid and long range distances because its rate of fire isn't as fast as an SMG, and it doesn't do the same kind of damage a pump would do from up close. If we switched roles and I was given only the pump and Mr. Savage was still in the other house but now only has an AR, then my game plan would change entirely. I know pump is best from up close and would have to maneuver my way over to him to try and get as close as I can. Remember, Mr. Savage is still the better player overall. If we had equal mats and an equal loadout, he would take a dump on me. But that's the difference between a perfect 1v1 scenario and battle royales, how they play out. My loadout and more importantly, how I play around my loadout can enable me to kill him even if he is a better player overall. If I choose to play the same regardless of my loadout and just rush him, yeah, I'll probably kill him when I have a pump and he only has an AR, but I'll die every single time I decide to rush him with an AR while he has the pump. A loadout advantage can be more than just guns though. So if we both have the same guns in this example, but I have 6 minis and a big pot, and he has no shields, I'll be able to use the shields that I have to my advantage. If we're both trading back and forth, getting shots on each other, and taking each other's shields off, I can just keep using my minis in between each time I peek. Again, I can just keep regenerating my shields because I have minis and a big pot and he doesn't, and I'll eventually win the trade and kill him or be able to push because he just doesn't have enough shield to outtrade me. You should always be looking and be aware of your loadout and how you can use it to your advantage. If you have a heavy sniper, you could use it to W key someone and shoot through their wall. If you have stinks, you can use it to stop someone from turtling. If you have boogie bombs, you want to get close enough to throw it without hitting yourself. The possibilities and the different loadout combinations are endless, but the main takeaway is that your loadout and how you play around it can enable you to beat and kill a better player. Second advantage would be positioning. This is also pretty simple to understand why it's effective in beating a good player. If I'm on a hill and a good player is pushing me from the bottom of the hill, just naturally I have an advantage. I can spray down on him to prevent him from coming up. Obviously he can still push, but as the more I spray, I'll be more likely to hit him and get shots off on him and stop him from pushing more. 
Another example we've all been through is someone storm pushing you. Either the zone is about to move or you're coming out of the current zone and there's some dude just sitting in a huge metal one by one with a gold scar and an RPG. While his loadout may give him part of the advantage in this case, even if he had a white AR and a few clingers or even just a white AR, he's going to be raining down fire on you and preventing you from healing or rotating to the next zone. His position alone here gives him the advantage in this situation. He could be a bad player with terrible aim, but the fact is that he's there and he's positioned in between you and zone and he's going to pressure you until you basically die. With really bad players, they'll just end up dead too, but the fact is that in his mind and overall, he basically won the engagement and ruined your game. I would never condone this type of mentality or to make a stupid play like that, but you gotta realize that people will do it and I wanna get across to you guys that even when you're a much weaker player, having a positional advantage can allow you to win a majority of your fights against good players. This applied with your loadout advantage is really key in mid and early game. You want to be using your loadout to decide where you should position, so combine the first advantage we talked about with this second positional one and that should dictate how you play and where you position in fights. Overall, your positioning is one of the easiest, yet most effective ways to beat a player that's better than you. The third advantage we'll go over is actually more of a disadvantage that your opponent puts himself in. I'll call it a situational weakness like the reddit post did. So a situational weakness is exactly what it sounds like. It's a situation where your opponent is just weak. This can be taken literally as in they just got done fighting and have 10 HP, or that they're farming or looting and they're caught with their pants down. The situations where your opponents don't have a ton of health or mats is a pretty straightforward scenario. Anytime you find two guys fighting or maybe come up on a guy after he just got out of a fight, the easiest way to secure that kill is to third party them. Third partying is easily the most annoying thing in Fortnite, but let's be real here, it's insanely effective. No matter how good your opponent is, if they just get out of a fight and have 20 HP and no mats, you'll have a much higher chance of killing them. If they're healing up inside a box, you want to go and pressure them, try to destroy their floor if they're campfiring, go for a wall replace and spray down the builds while they try to heal up. If it's a good player, you'll have to be careful you don't get too eager because they'll probably be able to get a shot off on you as you spray and replace their wall. But the point of this video is to maximize your probability of killing a really good player, so putting pressure and third partying them after a fight is one of the best ways to do it. The other situational weakness scenarios are when your opponent is farming and looting. Think about it yourself, like when you're farming a tree or opening a chest, you're extremely vulnerable because you just don't have a gun to return fire and it will take you a second or two to be able to build and block wherever you get shot at from. If Tifu's opening a chest and a bot snipes him in the head while he's hiding in a bush, well, I mean, that's kind of a legitimate way to die. As good as Tifu is, it's impossible for him to defend himself as he's opening a chest. You should always try to recognize when a player is weak. So if they're healing up in a campfire, you'll be able to see the smoke in the air. And if a player has his pickaxe out, you know when you can get a few shots off on him. Use the situational weakness that you see your opponent in to your advantage. The last thing that you can do to kill a player that's better than you is to make them play your game. What I mean by this is don't let a player walk all over you because you can tell he's good. If you play nervous and scared, a good player can sense that. If you watch any good player stream, whenever they come up on a weaker player, they can see it right away. The weaker player may just be messing up their builds or missing shots or like moving awkwardly, but any good player can sense that and will become more confident because they think they can secure the kill easily, so they'll actually become pretty cocky about it. What you need to do when you are that weaker player is become confident and make sure you're the one making the decisions. Turtle up in a 1v1 and make sure all the walls are your own. If a good player becomes cocky, they'll try and go for a lazy wall replace on you. Turn the situation around and go for a quick edit play, edit up and out of the box to get a high ground. If you're up against someone like Faye Sway, you know for a fact you'll never be able to outbuild them or win a build fight. So take them down to your own level and play to your strengths. Make sure you go and practice your turtling and editing so you can even the playing field in fights against good players. So to kind of summarize everything we went over, 1. Use your loadout to your advantage and play around it. 2. Position yourself to get an advantage over them based on your loadout. 3. Recognize and exploit when your opponent is weak in a situation like when they just get out of a fight or are looting. And lastly, make them play your game, play to your strengths, and be confident. Overall, these four scenarios and tips should help you fight and beat players that are better than you. If this video helped you out, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. I say it in every video, but I truly do appreciate everyone using my code. Code Jarian in the item shop, by the way. It helps me out a lot, and probably more than you guys would think. If we end up hitting 10,000 people using my creator code, maybe I'll give away a keyboard, like a Ducky 1-2 Mini or something like that. Right now, we're a little more than halfway there, so make sure you get everyone to use my code. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Thank you.